in this lesson, we are going to convert this class into a generic class. So currently, it makes use of objects. But to convert it to a generic, we go to the class name, open and close angle brackets, and then we put a type parameter. Now, this type parameter, I named it T. There is nothing special in the name. You can use other letters, but it is common to use letter T. We will change object to T. In the constructor, we would also change that type to type T. In the method return value, we would change it to type T. And right now, we have a generic class. You might say, hmm, what's all this about? Now, a generic class So let's say I create an object of store and I pass in integer. That means T represents an integer. Value will be an integer. That means you have to pass in an integer to the constructor. Also, that means the return value of get value would be an integer. You can have other variables in the class with types you have specified. For example, if I have a variable X, I can say it's a string. I know the type already, so you can't change that. But for generic types, we have like a placeholder. We don't know the type when we create the class. It is when we are creating an object of this class that we would specify what T would be. So it could be anything. It could be a string. It could be an integer. But once it is specified, every placeholder here that is of T would be of that type that is passed. Now let's create a new store object. And let me demonstrate how you pass in a type. If you noticed, we now have an angle bracket before the curved bracket. In that angle bracket, we would pass in the type. We passed in integer. So once we pass in integer, that means t is now an integer. That allows us to pass in an int value to the constructor. The int value would automatically be autoboxed into an integer object. Assuming I change the type to string, T will become a string. That means the constructor now wants to accept a string. So I cannot pass in an int. That is why there is an error there. So you need to understand how generic classes work. When you create an object of the generic class, you would pass in the type that generic class would work with. Once you pass in the type, every place where that type parameter is stated would have the value of that passed in type. You can create different objects of this class and all of them can have different types. We can call get value. If you noticed, we didn't have to cast it because Java already knows that, hey, since the type of this generic class is integer and get value is returning the type, that means the type it's returning is an integer. So you don't need to tell me to convert it to an integer. I know already. So you see the advantage of using generic classes. There is no room for mistake. With objects, I could pass in a string and then expect an integer. But with generic classes, once you specify the type of that class, 
Java wouldn't allow you to make a mistake. For example here, get value returns a string. So when you try to assign it to an int, it's going to tell you, hey, wait, this particular object has a type string. Get value returns a value of that type. So since get value is returning a string, you can't assign that value to an int. Assuming we used objects, it wouldn't know this because we would have to run the program and it will crash before we find out. But with generics, it helps you avoid those kind of errors. Generics are very important in Java and you would see different structures that make use of these angle brackets and type parameters.